Improving in any skill can be hard. You can practice, practice, and practice and not see any measurable improvement. So what do you do? In physical fitness, folks who want to see improvement go to the gym. They start working out, but they don't see improvement very fast. If you want to see fast improvement, you get a personal trainer, someone who can push you. In wood carving, you're probably out there on your own. You don't, you're not in a carving club. You're probably just some, bird, some person sitting on the, in front of their computer. You're watching YouTube videos, and you don't know anyone in real life who actually carves. So how do you get a personal trainer? Probably don't. If we quantify it, if we list out the things it would take to get better and how we can go about doing them, we can do it without a whole lot of extra work. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to break down three things that you can do to start getting better at carving. And I'm going to give you a fourth thing too at the end, which I think is probably the most beneficial. So please stick around for that because I think that's the one you need the most. I think this one's got the most impact. Number one, attempt carvings that make you uncomfortable. If you look at a carving and you think, I'm not sure I can do that. That is the carving you should try. If you look at a Dadala tutorial, Doug Link or Alec LeCast, I don't care who you're looking at. If you look at it, you think that seems a little bit outside of my comfort zone. That seems to look a little bit too far for me. I don't know I could accomplish that one. Try it. That's the one you should try, right? If you're in a gym and you start working out and you try to do 20 reps, the, the, the personal trainer is going to come over and say, why don't you try 25? Why don't you try 30? And they're going to push you outside of your comfort zone to do more. That's the same thing you have to do to yourself. If you keep doing the simple carving, like a simple snowman, and it's really easy for you and you can knock out 20 of them, that's great. You're going to improve your skill a little bit. Absolutely. But if you attempt the one that's more difficult, it's harder. The exponential skill growth you're going to see is amazing. Try carvings that make you uncomfortable. The problem with that is you're going to see terrible carvings. But that's okay. Keep going. All right, number two on this list is don't just do a carving once. Do it two times, three times, or four times, right? Take a look at the carving you did the first time and say, what can I do to improve that? And then give it a shot. See if you can make it better. And then when you get done with that one, do a third time and see what can I make better that I didn't do in the first one, second one. Where do, what do I not like about that carving the most? How can I improve that? What can I do to fix that? And then work on that. Push yourself on that. Look for the, the issues that you have because you don't have someone else pointing them out to you, right? Look for the issues that you have and push yourself to get better at those on a fourth carving or a fifth even. Every time you do it, you're going to see a, 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 a difference in the carving that you've got done. You're going to see that it's improved. And it might not have improved in quality. It might have just improved in the time, the time it took you to do it, right? It, the first one might take you an hour, and the second one takes you 30 minutes. Now, if even it's the same quality of carving, the fact that it took you significantly less time to do is amazing. And that is also a skill you're working on developing. And that brings me to reading number three, right? Finish terrible carvings. This is my favorite, right? I cannot tell you how many times I get into a carving and I'm halfway through and I realize it is looking terrible. It is absolutely atrocious and I should throw it away. That's the smart move. If I threw it away, that'd be best. No one should see this thing. I'll throw it in a fire pit and no one, it'll never see the light of day. No one will know how bad of a carving I made, but finish terrible carvings. <clears throat> no one can teach you this skill. This is the one you have to teach yourself, right? The ability to fix a terrible carving. That, that, that is, is coming along horrible and, and, and taking it, turning it into something wonderful, right? Now, I, I know that doesn't sound quite right because you can, you can sit down with a master carver and they can show you how to make a great carving. Absolutely. But when I say no one can teach you how to, how to, how to, how to fix terrible carving, I'm not talking about the physical skill of doing the carving. I'm talking about the mental skill of fixing that carving, right? When you get to that point where that carving is terrible and you look at it and you know it's terrible, being able to work past that, work through that, and figure out what next step needs to come is not something someone else can teach you. That mental process, that mental skill, is something you can only develop by doing it. And so if you let yourself go, if you let yourself walk away from it, you're never going to fix that. So don't let yourself walk away from it. Don't let yourself get up and, and, and go do something else and go to another carving. Don't move on. Stay here. Force yourself to stay in the seat, stay in your carving chair, stay in your carving bench, stay in your carving, wherever you're carving at and finish that terrible carving and then make another one. Do like I said, do it two times, do it three times, do it four times. Make more terrible carvings. The more we make terrible carvings, the more you're going to be able to make beautiful, wonderful carvings that you weren't able to make before. So then the next time that feeling hits where you're like, man, I just, this, this carving is looking terrible. I hate the way it looks. You'll be able to work past it more easily because you know what you're getting into. You know what you've done. 
as you do this, you're going to pick up new skills. You're going to pick up tools for your carver's toolbox, basically, that you can use to improve other carvings. You're going to say to yourself, and the way I fix the eyes on that ghost can really apply to what I'm doing with this mushroom man. Or the way I did that hillbilly or that jack-o'-lantern is really going to apply to this gnome because what I did wrong there, I can fix here. Growth is not easy. It does not come natural to us. We've got to push ourselves to grow. So when you see something and it gets it gets hard, and it's going to be hard, and, you, and it gets to where you're not comfortable with it, and it's not going to be comfortable, that's when you got to push through. That's when you got to put that extra effort in to push past it. Hey, if you want to help the channel out and get something in return, you can head over to Etsy and get one of these carving stickers at different varieties. You can put one on your water bottle, your tool tote, your carving space, wherever you want to put a sticker at. If you want to help out, you can. If you don't want to help out, don't even worry about it. <laughs> this is my carving sticker. That one's funny to me. At any rate, thanks so much. And that brings me to the bonus reason, number four, right? This is the one that most people don't want to hear. And this is a terrible thing. I hate, I hate, I hated this one the most because I'm an introvert, right? I don't like talking to people. A person, a person's great. I'm talking to you. You're awesome. But people, people are terrible. Man, I hate dealing with people. Join a carving club. And that can be hard. That can be difficult. Because for, for one, like, how do you find one? Most carving clubs don't even have an online presence. I mean, so many of them. The one I'm in doesn't have an online presence. They're not online. There's no website. So what do you do? You can go to your local library. You can ask around there because a lot of them set up at local libraries. You can get on Facebook groups like uh, Let's Talk Carving and get in there and ask, hey, I'm in you know South California. I'm in North Texas. I'm in East Louisiana. I'm in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. And say, what carving groups are near me? And some people out there will say, oh, I, I was through that town. Once there's a carving group over here, or there's a carving group over there. In those Facebook groups, you got carvers that have been doing this for 20 or 30 years. Uh, another great resource is the Wood Carving Illustrated Forums or, or, or Chip Chat and their forums, right? Chip Chats is a website that is a magazine and Wood Carving Illustrated the magazine. They have forums online. There are, there are all kind of resources that you need to find. Even in the comment section down below, get down there and start asking questions to see if someone can answer that for you. Find a carving club. Get into a carving club. So what benefits are going to be there if you join a carving club, right? You're just going to be having other people around you that carve. Is that it? No. There's going to be people who are better at you at carving, people who are worse than you at carving. And the beauty there is the people who are better than you, they can help you improve at the things you need to improve at. And the people who are not better than you, they are resources for you to use to improve your own ability because you can help teach them. You can help show them. <clears throat> you learn so much by teaching someone else because you learn how to quantify what it is that worked for you. And when you quantify it, you can realize how to better utilize that tool on your own. Because you may have been using it and not realizing, hey, I'm grabbing a crescent wrench until you try to tell someone, oh, this is what a crescent wrench looks like. Well, yeah, I have been doing that. That's a really neat point, Johnny. You're gonna teach yourself so much by teaching somebody else, by helping somebody else. So definitely get into a carving club, not just for the chance to get a mentor, but for the chance to mentor somebody else. And that's all I got for you today. Listen, I'm so glad you guys stopped by. Thank you so much for sitting with me and visiting with me and uh, let me talk to you guys about what it is that I want to talk to you about. If you liked the video at all, if you saw any kind of value in this whatsoever, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, don't forget to comment down below and talk to the people about maybe joining a carving club. See if there's one near you. There's going to be resources. I'm going to put them in the description below. Um, thank you so much for watching the channel. I hope you guys have a great weekend. and Watch one of these other videos, right? They're, they're popping up the screen here and here and here.